ticket yet been purchased for that glory bound terrain? Oh, will you ride? Oh, will you ride? Will you ride that train to glory by and by? Amen, amen, everybody. This is Brother Grizzle from the House of Prayer. Whoop, praise the Lord. I hope that you're doing fine today. I hope that God has made you what you need to be doing today. And that's worshiping, praising, and witnessing all to all people of the world that is lost and backslidden in the world. I hope today that you have tuned in to the House of Prayer. Yours truly, Brother Willie Grizzle down here in Scottsville, Kentucky. And I hope that you are blessed as much as I am today. So, brothers and sisters, we're going to be doing some music playing. We're going to be some toe tapping. We're going to be playing some testimonies. But most of all, we're going to be worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, stay tuned and just open you the word of God and let it apply to your heart. Amen, amen. Hello, Brother Chris down there in Crossville, Tennessee. I hope that you're doing fine today, that uh, God is moving in your life and you're blessing others amen amen so brothers and sisters we're going to go to the testimony line side right now so brothers and sisters enjoy hello brother willie i love you and i'm praying for you god bless you and your family this is uh brother boyd london in idaho and uh as soon as i can get the money here and i'm gonna be working on getting that other phone where I can uh, pay the 35 a month and have the unlimited calls, and I'll be able to make a lot more calls into your program line here and Brother Eddie's line and different prayers for people. I know there's so many people that need prayers. They ask me to pray for them, a lot of them, with different addictions and different problems, and God can definitely heal them and help them, and Jesus is good, and I'm very excited and happy I can be able to call more prayers and stuff in, too. I know you guys are making those CDs and different things at times to give out to people and stuff, which is so great. But, uh, you know, let's let's read this scripture here. This is a little bit different. There's more in the Bible than just John 3.16. I know so many people that say, John 3.16, you believe in Jesus, you automatically go to heaven. But there's another scripture that says even the demons believe and shudder. There's got to be more to it than just the belief in Jesus. We've got to have some actions to back up our faith. It says in the book of James that faith without deeds is dead. We're either going to have good deeds or we're going to have selfish, hard-hearted deeds and sinful deeds, not getting the sin out. Well, here's what Jesus says, Luke 9.23, then he said to them all, if any, anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. I've been following Jesus for uh, 21 years, confessed Jesus as Lord, accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior, and was baptized in the lake also. And, you know, Jesus has had me busy out there. I've been praying and asking every day for him to help me do the will of God. He says to go make disciples of all nations, teach them to obey everything, and to baptize them also. And uh, I've just been involved helping many people know about Jesus and what's in the scriptures constantly, teaching people how to obey everything, because there's more than John 3.16. Jesus wants us to have action to our faith. And, uh, you know, I've been involved doing that. We've been involved helping out churches. We're helping out uh, running the preschool program for the young kids at our church now. I've been involved helping Pastor Edwin for several years now with a group of orphan kids. There's churches and a lot of people involved with that. And I've been involved with prison ministries, helping people out. I'm helping uh, with that have had severe drug problems. I'm helping a friend right now, now who's in prison who had raped a woman, he's in there for another five years, and he just, just has to be busy just all the time trying to help people and show the love of Jesus to people, whether it's helping orphans and needy people or helping people get rid of the sin in their lives. And 
Jesus loves you. He cares for you. If you've got sin in your life, you will get it out. If you need healing, he will heal you. So please turn your life over to Jesus. Start doing the will of God. Let him change you so you can be welcomed into heaven. We love you all. We're praying for you. God bless you. Amen. Amen, Brother Boyd. Amen. You know, Brother Boyd stays busy. That's what we we'll both be doing in this walk of life. Uh, if you're born again washing the blood of Jesus Christ, you ain't got time to be doing foolishness. You're both to be out, out and about serving uh, the Word of God to a lost and dying world. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, enjoy this next song, Cumberland Gap. <laughs> I'm in the way, I'm in the, way the, narrow way, the narrow way To match his pride and purpose pride and faith But friends are be, be so glad and free so glad and free I'll be no stranger I'll be no stranger there I'll be no stranger there When all the saints come from the grave I'll be no stranger there I'll be no stranger there I'll be no stranger there, I'll be no stranger there. The Lord will call, the Lord will call both, great both great and small, to mansions bright, bright and, and first bright and bright. to have a I'll be no stranger there When all the saints come from the grave I'll be no stranger there Amen, amen. You know, when we get to heaven, there won't be no strangers because we'll be all one mind and one accord in a, around God's heavenly throne. Amen. Praise God. You know, Sometimes we walk through this earth, and uh, they people today say they're body of Christ, but they won't help no one. And they says, "Well, I'm doing the Lord's business. I go to church every Sunday. I do this and I do that." Well, you know that what that's what bothers me. You, everybody thinks that God just works in the four walls of a building. God works everywhere. And I'm proving fact of that. See, the Lord called me back to his fold when I was out here in my own backyard. Amen. I wasn't going to church. I know God and know about Jesus. But I was in one of them state of minds that, hey, I can serve Jesus and do what I like. It'd be all right, just fine. But when you face death, you're looking at death right dead in the eye. It makes you uh, put all your um, wants to the side, and then your needs kick in. Amen. You need to survive to where you can make it right with God. And you know, today, brothers and sisters, we're going to be talking about the realization of Christ. Amen. And the point now, who is the priest of Christ? And you probably think, well, where are you getting this from? Well, I'm getting it from Hebrews 8. And uh, if you got your Bibles, I want you to open it up. And while you listen to these testimonies and songs today, I want you to read it for yourself. I'm going to be reading from um, Hebrews 8, starting at the first verse and going down to the sixth verse. So everybody get your pen and your paper and uh, seek out the Word of God. And it tells you about the priest and who the true priest is. Amen. So, brother and sister, let's get over here and get the next testimony that's been called in. Remember, you can call in a testimony, too. You can be an overcomer, and uh, you can pass this number along to everybody. Amen? And that number is uh, 270-681-8098. you got three minutes. You can call many times you want, 24 hours, seven days a week, and give your testimony. Everyone that I get here, I just... If it pops up, I play. Amen? So, 
Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ, because he's not ashamed of you. But if you be ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you and among his father. So, brothers and sisters, well, let's get it clear today. that This house of prayer, this minister here, Brother Grizzle, is wants to enlighten you, to give you the power to overcome all sinful ways. Amen? Amen. So, enjoy this next testimony. you and god bless you and i'm praying for you and for your family i was going to call in and see a prayer right now this is brother boyd london in idaho and uh soon as soon as i get the money i'm going to get it worked out to get that other phone where i have the unlimited calls on it each month so i'll be able to call in a lot more prayers and calls between your line and brother eddie's line which is good it helps speed out to pray for people and make these calls also we've all got to say no to sin and live for jesus each day he says he overcomes to the end will be saved we've got to overcome we got to deny that sin, say no to sin. we got to do the will of God each day. Jesus calls us to do the will of God. It's more than just going on 316, more than just going to church on Sundays. It's losing your life for Jesus and the gospel, Luke 9, 22-26. You know, Jesus always has us busy teaching the word of God to the people, praying for people, sharing testimonies, helping those orphans, dead, homeless people, and needy people. Boy, if you're uh, in the kingdom of God, truly living for Jesus, he keeps you busy. And I want to say a prayer for anyone who needs help, uh, for our families, for all of us. Father, I want to come to you in prayer right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sin. It says in Psalm 102, hear my prayer, O Lord, let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me in that day. I call, answer me speedily. And I just thank you, Father, that we can cry out to you for help in our lives and you will deliver us. And uh, help us with whatever we need help. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us. We are not in ourselves. We are his His people, the sheep of his pasture. Thank you, Father, that we are your people, your sons and daughters down here. Those people who uh, trust to turn their lives over to Jesus and are living in your kingdom or your people and you will help us, Father. You've made the stars, the earth, the sky, the clouds, everything that exists. You know, each of those stars by name, you have unlimited power in our lives to help us. It says in Luke 18, 27, things which are impossible with men are possible with God. If we have faith in the small as a mustard seed, we can say to will not be moved, take it up, cast in the sea, and it will be done. Right now, I'm praying and asking and believing that you're helping anyone hearing this who needs help in their lives. I pray for my family, for my grandma Naomi, for my sister Annie to be healed of that schizophrenia, for me to be totally healed of those food allergy problems. I claim our healing that you are helping us. I pray for Brother Willie, for his wife and daughter, for his family, for any healing they need, for any help that they need, for Brother Willie as he goes to work, for you to strengthen him and help him and give him strength at work as he witnesses the people and does your will, for you to strengthen him and help him and for you to strengthen and heal and help us all. I thank you, Father, that you are great, incredible God, and I truly believe that you're helping and Anyone hearing this who needs healing and help and deliverance from sin in their lives, thank you, Father, for helping us all. Love you so much. I pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless all. We love you. Well, John, John, we're happy here. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Been to the river, walked away my sin. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready, Lord, walking in your room just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready, Lord, walking in your room just like John. Like John, some come walking in Jesus' name, walking in your room, I'm just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready, Lord. Walking in your room, I'm just like John. I want to be ready, I want to be ready, I want to be ready, Lord. Walking in your room, I'm just like John. Hello, Brother 
Willie. I uh, love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and uh, I'm going to say a prayer for us all here. Appreciate the prayers for us and uh, for Edna and Isabel over there in the Philippines. I'm still standing in agreement on total yield of those food allergy problems, and uh, I just thank God for healing and for helping us all. Father, I want to come to you in prayer right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses and diseases so that we can have our sins forgiven, so that we can be healed of our sicknesses and diseases. Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases from Matthew 8, 17. And in fact, in Chronicles 7, 14, Father says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their land. I want to pray and ask, Father, that you'll help anyone hearing this who needs to turn from sin and wickedness, that you'll forgive our iniquities and our sins, and that you'll help us to repent and get the sin out and go and sin no more, as Jesus called people to do. I see people with so many sins, Father. Uh, people are caught up in all kinds of uh, sexual type stuff and pornography and horrible stuff that way and drug use and drunkenness and rapes and murders and just all that stuff that's going on out there. But Jesus gives us all hope. We can repent. We can turn our lives over to Jesus, accept Jesus as Lord, and he can help us get that sin out and we truly repent so we can be welcomed into heaven. And please hear this prayer, Father, to heal anyone who needs healing and to help us to heal our nation, our land, and our world for many people to find Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior and get saved. I want to pray for Brother Willie and his family, for you to touch them and heal them with whatever they need help with and healing. It says in Philippians 4, 13, that we can do everything through Jesus, through Christ, who gives us strength. And I want to pray for you to give Brother Willie strength and his family as they go through their days, as Brother Willie works his job. Give us all strength to be able to do your will and to go out there and tell people about Jesus and get them saved and preach against sin and get sin out of people's lives and help us to be outwardly focused on those homeless people, working kids, people in prisons, hospitals, needy people that we're helping. We can do the will of God and be welcomed into heaven and be doers of the word, not hearers only. And I just thank you, Father, so much for healing and for helping us all and for forgiving our foolishness and our sin and our wickedness. Thank you. We all have a chance to repent and turn our lives over to Jesus. We can all repent of sins and say no to sins and have our sins forgiven and be welcomed into heaven. And may we be a part of doing the Great Commission, going out and making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything and baptizing them, which is part of doing the will of God and praying for people, sharing our testimonies and doing good instead of evil. I pray this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I love you, Father. God bless you all. We love you and have a good day. Amen. <laughs> Son, they called in Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died. My Savior lives Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He lives All fear is gone Life's final war with pain and 
often as death gives way to victory. I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He reigns because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I. Just because he lives, we have a future, brothers and sisters, that we could turn our hearts on to Jesus Christ and let him heal us, let him teach us, but most of all, let him love us. Amen. And if you love Jesus, Jesus loves you, why would you hold it up? Amen. Why would you just put it in a little box and serve God when you want to? You know, you could serve him right now. You could call that testimony line that's in the chat room and say just give praise what god has done for you today amen you don't have to sit in a life of doubt you you can serve god on high this very moment this very hour hello sister uh shirley collin oh sister shirley how are we doing i hope that you're doing fine um just got back from um oh um Da, 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 da. <laughs> Amen. Uh, General Freedom Baptist Church, uh, Brother Frankie, uh, throwed me under the bus today. He wanted me to get up and preach, and I did. I can think I made a lot of them mad, but the truth went out. They'll deal with it, or they'll they love me or they hate me. Either way, I love them. Praise God. And uh, you know, uh, um, if you just tuned in, uh, we're going to be talking about what's high priest. Amen. Is there a high priest on earth, or is there only one high priest? Amen. Praise God. Um, we'll, we'll be reading from uh, Hebrews 8. Uh, it's 1 through uh, 6. Amen. So you can guys get your Bible, your pen, your paper, and all whatever, and you could study it. And and I, I asked you today. You know, uh, a lot of times when um, preaching's going on, um, everybody just wants to come here to preaching, but they don't want to ask no questions. But I give you an opportunity today that if there's something on your heart that the scriptures you don't understand, I'll pray to the Holy Ghost that'll give me the words to speak to help you understand in this walk of life. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, let's get to the next testimony here. I think it is uh, from Cross Bill. Amen. Amen. So, enjoy. Well, praise the Lord. God bless, brother. We love you too, man. Hey, uh, if you would, everyone, please pray for Sister Rachel Honeycutt. She's on the way today to go to Ashland, Kentucky, in support of uh, the lady that stood up against the gay marriage uh, license issue there in Ashland, Kentucky. And uh, she couldn't get no one to go with her, but she stepped out and obeyed the Lord, and uh, she's on the way by herself. So thank you for your prayers. May God continue to bless you. Bye-bye. Amen, amen. Brother Eddie from Crossville, Tennessee. Sister Rachel went up there, up in that little county, I think it's uh, Morgan County or Rogan, something, something like that, where that lady's been prosecuted for her faith that she stood up for obeying the word of God that she just didn't feel right that a gay should be married. 
What's your opinion about that today, brothers and sisters? Do you think it's biblical for a man and man to be married and a woman and woman to be married? Or are they lay down with the same sex? That's a question I ask you today. Are you for praying for this lady? I think her name is Hall. Last name is Hall. I ain't for sure. It might be. I can't. I can't. I know. Uh, I got it on my prayer list over here somewhere. But um, uh, let's be praying for that lady because she stood up for the the word of God, and um, her one of her assistants has made uh, give license to a gay couple, two men that a uh, marriage license. Well, this old boy that's done this, he's he's gonna have to face judgment. Amen. He better repent before he perishes, because when he faces judgment, God's going to look at him and say, you have disobeyed me. So, brothers and sisters, let's keep that guy, that one that has made this mistake and hand out a, uh, a marriage license to this gay couple, homosexual couple, and because uh, it, it's not holy. I'll just tell you that right now. It's not holy for a man and a, uh, two men to be married, or two women to be married, or lay down and, as a man uh, with a woman. I mean, come on. So, brothers and sisters, what's your opinion today? Do you think it is by the eyes of God and by the rules that he gives us through the Holy Word and the commandments, it should it be that you that they uh, that you be prosecuted? for giving license or should you stand for what the word of god says amen oh yeah that's right kim davis i got hall on my mind for some reason yeah and sister shirley says in in the chat room here it is abomination unto the lord it is kim davis amen that's right amen you know uh, let's keep uh, sister davis in prayer that uh, she'll stand and she won't waver or faint. You know, a lot of times people get pressured and get pushed and this and that and the other and then they been, they compromise. Well, see, our Lord Jesus don't compromise. He says what he means and he means what he says. And you know, one day, everybody, even everybody in this chat room, live on archive, either way, see, you, you know you're going to be judged. And, uh, Everything you do, you see, you think, you heard, and all that, and you didn't do nothing about it, you'll answer for. That's that's the plain wide fact. Everybody says, well, you can be gay and be Christian. No, you can't. You're one or the other. You're born again, washing the blood of Jesus Christ, or you're playing the devil's hand, and you have been deceived, and you will bust hell wide open if you die in a sinful state of mind and spirit. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, let's enjoy this next uh, testimony here from Brother Boyd three days ago. Let's, oh, yeah, let's keep Sister Rachel in prayer. She went on down there by herself. I noticed on Facebook that uh, she had asked anybody who wanted to join her. And everybody's well, like normal. Everybody makes excuses. But you know what you do in heaven. What you do on earth will be done in heaven. Amen. And her reward will be given to her. If she stays strong and not faint not, the crown of life will be upon her head one great day. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, let's enjoy this next testimony. Hello, Brother Willie. I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. And I'm going to say a prayer for us all here. Appreciate the prayers for us and uh, for Edna and Isabel over there in the Philippines. I'm still standing in agreement on total yield of those food allergy problems, and uh, I just thank God for healing and for helping us all. Father, I want to come to you in prayer right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and for our sicknesses and diseases so that we can have our sins forgiven, so that we can be healed of our sicknesses and diseases. Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases from Matthew 8:17. Here in Second Chronicles 7, 14, Father says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. I want to pray and ask, Father, that you'll help anyone hearing this who needs to turn from sin and wickedness, that you'll forgive our iniquities and our sins, and that you'll help us to repent and get the sin out and go and sin no more, as Jesus called people to do. 
I see people with so many sins, Father. Uh, people are caught up in all kinds of uh, sexual type stuff and pornography and horrible stuff that way and drug use and drunkenness and rapes and murders and just all that stuff that's going on out there. But Jesus gives us all hope. We can repent. We can turn our lives over to Jesus, accept Jesus as Lord, and he can help us get that sin out and we truly repent so we can be welcomed into heaven. And please hear this prayer, Father, to heal anyone who needs healing and to help us to heal our nation, our land, and our world for many people to find Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior and get saved. I want to pray for Brother Willie and his family for you to touch them and heal them with whatever they need help with and healing. It says in Philippians 4, 13, that we can do everything through Jesus, through Christ, who gives us strength. And I want to pray for you to give Brother Willie strength and his family as they go through their days, as Brother Willie works his job. Give us all strength to be able to do your will and to go out there and tell people about Jesus and get them saved and preach against sin and get sin out of people's lives and help us to be outwardly focused on those homeless people, working kids, people in prisons, hospitals, needy people that we're helping. We can do the will of God and be welcomed into heaven and be doers of the word, not hearers only. And I just thank you, Father, so much for healing and for helping us all and for forgiving our foolishness and our sin and our wickedness. Thank you. We all have a chance to repent and turn our lives over to Jesus. We can all repent of sins and say no to sins and have our sins forgiven and be welcomed into heaven. And may we be a part of doing the Great Commission, going out and making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything and baptizing them, which is part of doing the will of God and praying for people, sharing our testimonies and doing of evil. I pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I love you, Father. God bless you all. We love you, and have a good day. Amen. God. You know, when you get in that situation in life and you don't think, well, why am I doing this? Why am I going out and preaching and witnessing to people? And you don't know 
I don't seem like there's nobody's listening. Let me tell you something. Somebody might hear you say something to someone else and might change their heart. You know that? Amen. I, there's many times that I have uh, been out and witnessed to people and uh, they give me the old cold shoulder. But somebody around the corner had heard me. And they called me up and says, can I talk to you a second? I said, sure. What's your name? And uh, they, we'd have a conversation, you know, chitter chatter. And he says, I overheard you talking to so-and-so and I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, and I'm usually when they ask me a question, we start talking about the Lord. And he says that that's uh, he said. But why do you do that? He says for the reason the reason why I do that is because of people like you that are curious, that wants to be touched by the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, that want, is hungry for the Word of God. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, don't ever think that. When God tells you to go witness to somebody and they don't and you think it's falling on deaf ears, Lord's word will not go void. You might be just entertaining angels unaware. Who knows? Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's listen to the next testimony. Hello, brother uh, Willie, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd in Idaho. I could use some prayers myself. I've been feeling pretty good, but the last couple of days the devil's been attacking me with those food allergy problems. I've been preaching hardcore against sin, trying to call people out of sin, and uh, I think the devil's mad at me. He gets mad at us all and tries to attack us, so I appreciate the prayers for me. I'm going to say a prayer for us all, and uh, yeah, as soon as I can get the money and stuff, we're going to be looking into getting that uh, phone with the unlimited calling per month, and I'll be able to make a lot more calls and prayers in, which is good because these prayer calls and prayers help me out also. It helps, and I think it helps anyone out hearing them also. So glory to God and praise God. God is good and Jesus is good. Father, I want to come to you in prayer right now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. He died a horrible, painful death for our sins. Please help that death, the grace of your Son dying for us to motivate us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to go and repent and get the sin out of our lives, as we're called to do in Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14, and then help us be motivated by the love of Jesus and his death for us to become that special, peculiar people that goes out and does good works, that helps those needy people, that preaches needy people on the drugs and the whole sexual living in sin and gets them saved and tells them about Jesus so they can repent and get the sin out. Changes, Father, help us, help us to say no to sin. I want to command the devil away from us, Father. It says, in uh, James 4, 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. As we submit to you, Father, and do your will, and tell the love of Jesus to the world, and uh, get people saved, and help those needy people, and do your will, we're submitting to you and what you want us to do in your lives. And it says we will resist the devil, and he will flee from us. We command the devil away from me right now in the name of Jesus Christ, of those uh, food allergy attacks that he's trying to hit me with. I claim that I am healed by the stripes and wounds in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I command the devil away from Brother Willie and his family, from anyone hearing this, the devil's attacking, from anyone who may be sick. We stand on your word that Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, by the stripes and wounds in the name of Jesus, we are healed. Matthew 8, 16 and 17 says that Jesus healed all who were sick. He really did take on from us and bore our sicknesses, and we can resist the devil. We will flee from us. I command the devil away from us and claim anyone hearing this is healed and needs healing. And anyone who's struggling with those addictions and sin and drug use and pornography and drunkenness and those sins, I claim they're healed. They will know the truth, and the truth will get them set them free, and they'll get those sins out of their life. I claim they're helping us all. We are all healed, and I command the devil away from us. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will... Please, when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love you all. We're praying for you. Amen. Sister Mary, she wears a golden chain. Sister Mary, she wears a golden chain. Sister Mary wears a golden chain. Every link in Jesus' name, there's no hiding place down here. There's no hiding place down here. There's no hiding place down here. Well, you run to the rock to hide your face. The rock's right out, no hiding place. There's no hiding place down here. Hip 
hypocrite shoe. The devil he wears a hypocrite shoe. The devil wears a hypocrite shoe, and if you don't watch, he'll slip it on you. There's no hiding place down here. There's no hiding place down here. There's no hiding place down here. When you run to the rock, to hide your face. The rock shot out, no hiding place. There's no hiding place down here. The rock shot out, no hiding place. There's no hiding place down here. Amen. There ain't no hiding place down here, brothers and sisters. You can't even hide in church from God. Amen. You know, a lot of people in this world today thinks, well, I'll go do this and nobody will know about it. But let me tell you something. Let's get your gears on today. Amen. That you can't hide from God. If you got anything odd against Al me or any brother or sister or anybody out there that's hurt your feeling or stomped your toe, why don't you just go to them and say, hey, I got a problem. Talk it out. Break bread. Amen. You know, a lot of times we sit back and we just kick the dirt because, well, they hurt my feelings. I ain't going to talk to them no more. I ain't going to listen to them no more because, oh, my, they hurt my feelings. Well, let me tell you something. If you're not right with God, it's more than your feelings going to be hurt. Amen? Because lake of fire is hot. Amen? <laughs> Hell is spanning every day, but heaven has got it, is being made a certain size, a certain place. And I don't know about you, but I want to be where I have to, where I can go, where I won't have to suffer no more. I won't have to worry about blood pressure no more. I won't have to worry about headaches no more. I won't have to worry about body aches no more. Because, you know, there's a place called heaven our glorious father is creating for each one of us amen that is willing to fight the battle of the devil down here till we can make, be able to worship and praise him and uh, protect what god has given us and you know what that is and that's the power of faith and prayer and love and mercy you know a lot of times we get up behind these mics or bull pits and say well this is what so say the Lord says to me. And then, then you know, they'll put on a little show or tell you some kind of little grandpa story, but they don't get to the Word of God. So, brothers and sisters, we're going to get into the Word of God today. Amen? Like I said, we're going to be reading <clears throat> from Hebrews 8, starting at the first verse. And it says like this, Now these things which we have spoken, this in some, we have such a high priest who is set there up on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Well, first thing, well, let's take it for what it says right there. It says that they have set up, amen, they have set up the high priest up on the right hand of the throne of God in heaven. So, brothers and sisters, the high priest is our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let's, let's go on to the second verse. And the minister of the sanctuary... And of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and no man. So, why is the, everybody, these churches today, wants to put all fancy stuff in their church, but they want to lock a door where nobody will steal nothing? Does that sound like a true tabernacle to you? When God says he has the true tabernacle in heaven, where well, we're working, striving to get to. Amen? Praise God. Okay, third verse. And he says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice. Wherefore, it is necessary that this man have so, so what also offers. So, if you're a man or woman of God, you're offering a, a lost, somebody a lost or backslidden something. And you know what it is? It's salvation. And to inform them that you are not right with God. And you know, a lot of times people say, well, how do you know I'm not right with God? Well, look at the tree. Look at the fruit they bear. And if they're out here cussing and drinking and uh, womanizing or watching porn or doing whatever they feel that is right to them, it's not right to God. Now, we got to clarify that to people. And that's what we offer from the heavenly gates. Amen? Praise God. 
All right, now, verse 4. It says, For he that were on earth, and he shall not be a priest. And see, see that they are priests offered gifts according to the law. What law is he talking about there? He's talking like the Mosaic law. See, we're both to be given the gift of bread of life to people that are out in the world today that needs to be fed spiritually because the churches today are spiritually trying to starve. See, God gives us the power. If we call upon the power in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall be healed, not in my name, not in Brother Eddie's or uh, the other Eddie or Sister Shirley or Brother Chris, in the power in the name of Jesus Christ because man can't do nothing but God can do all. Amen. But we got to call up on our intercessor. Who is our intercessor? Jesus Christ. Amen. If we call upon him, he said, whatever our heart desires, he will give to us. Why are we calling upon that? Because we're not putting our full faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, all right, fifth verse. Who serves unto the example in the shadows of heaven things? As Moses was abom abomished, of uh, of God, which he had about to make a tabernacle, for seeing he s and said he that they make all things according to the path shown to the uh, on the mountain. So when Jesus was telling them, he, he was giving them a, a road map. You see right here. Now look here. This is what you both to do. You go in there with mercy. You go in there with love, and you go in there with truth. See, now a lot of people think, well, I'll go down there going to throw rocks at me. Well, let them throw rocks. Ain't, you wouldn't be the first disciple to be knocked off with a rock. Or they might beat me down. Well, you won't be the first one. You won't be the last. See, now, if you think you're going to be able to witness this without somebody, without getting a lashing, you might be thinking about to see if you're truly a child of God. Amen? Because I know I've been in places they spit on me. I've been hit by cars. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've been through I've been through hell and back. But you know I get up every morning and I praise God. Do you know why I praise God? Because he let me live another day. Because he's the one that is going to get me into heaven. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the only person that's going to ever get me into heaven. You see, you can't you can't climb over the wall into heaven. You can't sneak in. You can't uh, think you're going to put a gown on and you just gonna walk right in. See, you remember you remember the story where the king uh, called uh, told his servant to get everybody to come in, mangled, sick, or nothing. All of them, just bring them on in. Well, when they got them in there, that uh, king says, "Why are you wearing this wardrobe?" He didn't he didn't question. It. He just turned around and. I uh, said, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the inner darkness. See, now, getting people into church is hard enough. But you're beating them to death with the Bible ain't helping none. Amen. That's where, we, that's where the love and mercy of God comes from. Well, that's where we got to go out and about and preach the gospel to a lost and dying world. You know, so many people strive and spend, uh, envy and strife. And they said, well, you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. You're going to do... Well, the first thing, we're not here to judge. We're going to be fruit inspectors. If we see a fruit, that, uh, the tree that's dying, well, two things going to have to happen. We're going to have to try to trim that tree where it'll grow or cut it down and cast it into the fire. Amen? But you know, brothers and sisters, we're not here to judge. We're here to love one another as God loves us. Amen. Praise God. And the last verse here, it says, But now have thou obtained the more experienced minister by how much as he met mentored of, of a better covenant, but when he established upon a better promise. You see, now, Adam was the first uh, human that had a human soul. All right? And Adam got deceived by a serpent through his wife. Amen? See, he had a choice, but he got deceived. See, now, Jesus Christ, to me, was the second Adam. But this time, you didn't deceive Jesus Christ. He had a mission. 
Amen. He had a mission from our Heavenly Father to die, to be risen on the third day for our sins, our sorrow, our pain, our grief, all that. If you could put all that under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ and walk that devil down the way we both to do every day. You know, like um, Sister Shirley this morning, she texted me. She said her blood pressure is out of control. Well, I started praying, and I said, Devil, I sit here, and I cast that evil blood pressure spite out in the name of Jesus. And I, and I, I hold it in faith that her blood pressure is leveled out today, and she just raised her hand and praising God. Because, you know, if we don't hold faith, what are you holding? I mean, why are you still here? If you think you are perfect in your life and you think there is nothing else you can't do, why are you still here? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we all, like I said, we need to um, be fair and trembling every step we make because we might just do something to make somebody stumble. And that's why the Lord asked me to tell, talk about today is about priests. Do you hold your brother or sister up on high? Let me... I I was praying about this while I was at church this morning. And the Lord told me, he says, be careful about putting somebody up on a pedestal. Because pedestals can be knocked over. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, I'm not saying not to love them. But be careful. Be careful who you put up for the devil to attack. If you love your brothers and sisters, support them. Amen. Pray for them. But don't put them up as a god. Amen. You know, we're all here for a short period of time. And we, then we'll leave this earth. And you know, today, the reality is given. The world is coming to the very end very shortly. The very last moments is coming. So, brothers and sisters, if you have a loved one out there, or you got something on your heart that needs to be taken care of, why don't you get a hold of them today and tell them that Jesus Christ loves them to return back to the hands of God before it's too late. So, brothers and sisters, uh, we got uh, one more testimony here, and then we'll uh, have a song, and then we'll last remarks. Amen. If you want to call, call in that number, 270-681-8098, and leave your testimony. If not... When the Lord's done, I'm done. Amen? Amen. Hello, Brother Willie. I love you, and I'm praying for you, and God bless you. God bless you and your family. This is uh, Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I appreciate the ongoing prayers. I command the devil away from me. Uh claim the total healing of those food allergy problems. I have been doing pretty good, but the devil has been attacking me the past couple of days. I claim the total healing of Ed and his daughter, that asthma. Appreciate the prayers for uh, her to be totally healed or standing in agreement that we are healed by the stripes wounds in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses on the cross, Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. I wanted to read a scripture here and talk a little bit about doing good. James 4, 17, Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So if you see good to do and don't do it, it's sin. This may be pretty important because in Matthew chapter 7, remember Jesus says many people are going to say, Lord, Lord, and even have a form of religion and have gone to church and stuff, but he's going to look at them and say, depart from me, I never be you workers of iniquity. It says about that because they lacked something, they didn't do the will of God, they didn't do the good that, that they were supposed to do. So this is very important. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it's a sin. See, there's more than John 3.16 and believing in Jesus and going to church on Sundays. That's good. That's a good start. But Jesus really calls us to be men of action and to be ambassadors for Christ, to go out there and make disciples of all nations, teach them to obey everything, and baptize them also from the Great Commission. It's part of doing good is going out there and telling people about Jesus. And, you know, we've been doing that. We've been helping different people out in the prison systems. My friend Dusty, who was in the gangs and going to get killed, was on drugs and you know, all kinds of crime. We've been helping them out and people like that. And we've seen them from Jesus and get saved. So that's part of doing the good we should do is witnessing the people and telling them about Jesus. And then helping needy people, uh, 
It says right here over in uh, the book of James, what does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have work and faith to save him, if a brother or sister is naked or destitute daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace and be warm and filled, but don't give them the things which you need in the body, what does it profit? This also, by faith by itself, it does not have works, is dead. So we need to be helping the destitute and needy people. Over in one, James 1.27 here it says, the religion God likes is helping all orphans and widows, and we've been doing that a lot. Help the orphans and it says in the parable of the sheep and the goats to help the people in the prisons like we've been doing and go to the hospitals and pray for people. If we see homeless people that we can help, we should take care of them. Our neighbors that are lacking things that they run out of money and can't feed their kids, we should try to help them. It's all part of doing good, having action to our faith, not having a dead need, but having action to our faith. We see the good we're supposed to do and we do it. We should be praying for people, sharing testimonies. Even believing like that, hey, if we do that, we won't be called workers of the nigga. We won't be welcomed into heaven. So I hope we can all do the good that we're supposed to do. We love you all. We're praying for you. God bless you. Amen. Old man left him This world can't go on. Silver and gold, high and said Peter to the man that day. Daily he might lay at the gate. All of us went inside to pray. But the search is high, give up. He and the air and the lift is tall. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's what we both be doing, brothers and sisters. Rise up and walk. That's what we both be telling If you see somebody on the side of the street that's hurting and that needs God, why don't you just get over there in the name of Jesus, put your hand upon them and say, in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Be healed this very moment, this very hour, this very second. The presence of God is upon you. Why ain't you doing this, brothers and sisters? You know why? Because your lack of faith. Because you think, well, somebody's going to look at me like I'm crazy. Well, let me tell you something like a song said there. Like so many that walk into church go to pray, but they won't pray in front of somebody and show them the power of God upon them. Praise God, you know today is a day of salvation. You ain't got time to be sitting around boo-hooing. You got time to be worshiping and praising mighty God and show them the power. You know, like when Paul, he walked and run down there among the, the Gentiles. The shadow, amen, the shadow of him. Pass over people and they were healed. We both to have that kind of power. You know why but we don't? Because we don't show our faith every day, every second. No matter where we walk, where we speak, where we talk, or what we do. Because, uh, praise God, you know, today is a day of salvation. If you're playing around, playing silly games, and think, well, I'll just read my Bible and... I'll just sing a couple songs to myself, and I'll just be, I'll be fine. Well, let me tell you something. If God is giving you a gift and you're not using it, he will take it away from you. That's right. Live or archive, I don't care where you're at or how you're listening to this. Let me tell you something today. If God has gave you to give you, Give a gift to you. It could be singing. It could be preaching. It could be being a Bible studies. Or it could be anything. But if you don't use what God has given you, he will. Quote, take it away. 
brothers and sisters, if you are lost and undone out in this world today, you better get right, because the door is going to be shut pretty soon. So this is Brother Grizzle from the House of Prayer. I hope today that I'll give you a blessing and that you could bless other people. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as I sign off today, remember that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, went to the old rugged cross to die for your soul this very moment, this very hour. But if you let go of God's hand and you walk into the pits of hell, don't scream out, God, you gave your choice when you give up God. So, brothers and sisters, love all of you. This is Brother Grizzle from the House of Prayer down here in Scottsdale, Kentucky. Remember, pass the number along, 270-681-8098. Call and give your testimony, your prayer, anything that you've got on your heart. Let the world know that you're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Love all of you. God bless. God gave no the rainbow sign, don't you see? God gave no the rainbow sign, don't you see? God gave no the rainbow sign, no more water but fire next time. Hide me, old rock, no they just play it for me. I've got a home in that rock, don't you see? I've got a home in that rock, don't you see? I've got a home in that rock, just beyond the mountain top. Hide me, old rock, a baby, live for me.